Now we're going to look at how oxygen can oxidize other substance. Meanwhile, it serves undergoes a process of reductions. And they tell us that oxygen will be reduced to become water. So this is our general ideals, and we're going to balance it off like usual. At our right hand side, we have more hydrogen. But left hand side, we have no hydrogen at all. So we're going to add hydrogen at the left hand side first. After that, we are balanced with the elements. And now we're going to balance the number of atoms. Our left hand side, we have two oxygen, but our right hand side have only one. So we're going to write down two to balance off the oxygen first. Then after that, we look at the hydrogens. Now we have four hydrogen at the right, but one at the left. So we use four to balance off. And then we're going to count the charges. Four times one is four plus zero is equal to zero. So it's why we know the difference is going to be four. So four electrons are added to the more positive side. For this case, it's going to be left hand side. So it's why we have plus four electrons on the left and we need to rearrange it to become looks nicer. And we are done for this case. And it tells that oxygen can eventually take an alternative pathway to become water, which we have a byproduct. The byproduct is what we call as the hydrogen peroxide, which is one of the antiseptic. This is our general idea. So we're going to balance off. Can you see that? Right hand side have hydrogen, left hand side have no hydrogens. So we're going to add hydrogen first. Then after that, we balance the number of atoms. We have two here. So we times two at the left. And then we count the charges. Left hand side have positive two. So the difference is just two. Two electrons are added to the left, which is a more positive side. Then we are done. And after that, this hydrogen peroxide is going to further reduce to become water. So this is another idea again. Now we're going to times two for the water so that we can balance off the two oxygen at the left. But the problem here is now we have four hydrogens. In order to balance the hydrogens, we're going to plus another hydrogen at the left hand side. So how many hydrogen is lacking? Here we have two, but right hand side we have four. So we're going to times two for the hydrogen here. So now it balances off with four hydrogen for both sides. Then after that, we're going to balance off the charges. Left we have positive two, and right hand side we have nothing. So the difference is two electrons will be added to the left hand side, which is more positive. Then we are done. So we can say that hydrogen peroxide is also one of the common oxidizing agents because it will undergo the reductions to become water. Do you rest that all of the hydrogens ion here? Eventually, these reactions only valid for the acidic conditions. How about now we are going to look at the alkaline conditions? We're going to think of one way to remove the hydrogen ion, which is responsible for the acidic conditions. So we're going to add in the hydroxide ions in order to neutralize the hydrogen ions. Since there are four hydrogen ions, we're going to add in four hydroxide ions as well. In order to keep it balanced, we're going to add four hydroxide ions to both sides, like this. After that, you will see that the four hydrogen ions will be neutralized by the four hydroxide ions to form four water molecules. Because this is the neutralization, right? They will form four water molecules, like this. But do you realize that in the end of the reactions, we have two water molecules left. It means that there are two water molecules that is not involved in the reactions, or we call it as an inactive. So eventually we can remove two water molecules from both sides, like this. And this reaction will be valid for alkaline conditions, and that's all for oxygen. Let's look at halogens, which is basically just the elements from group 17. We're not going to look at all of them, but the four most common halogens, which are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. All of them will be axis as diatomic molecules. Fluorine and chlorine gas will be axis as gas at room temperatures. Bromine water, which is the reddish brown, will be axis at liquid at room temperatures. Iodine, which is purplish black colors, will exist as solid at room temperatures. C 
since oxidizing agents will be going through the process of reduction, which is basically just gain of electrons. So why if halogens are good oxidizing agents all thanks to their electronegativity, which is the tendency to attract electrons. As we know, fluorine has 7 valence electrons, means they are more than happy to just accept one more electron. So this is why we say that halogens are very high in electronegativities. But the negativity eventually reduces down the group. This is due to the additional number of shells when going down the groups. So let's say now we have fluorine, which has two electron shells. Meanwhile, chlorine will have three electron shells. So the electronegativity will be measured based on the attraction force from the nucleus that is center of the orbitals. But now, when we have more shells, means it's further from the outer layers means your attraction force will be decreases down the groups. So this is why, indirectly, we can say that the oxidizing power decreases down the groups. Basically, fluorine is a better oxidizing agent as compared to chlorine. Chlorine is eventually a better oxidizing agent as compared to bromine. And bromine is a better oxidizing agent as compared to iodine. So let us look at the half equation for the halogens that are going through the reduction process. Since we say fluorine is a diatomic molecule, after undergoes the reductions, they will form the halogen ions, which is a negative ion. Balance the element first. We have two fluorines, so we're going to have add two to the right hand side. After that, we're going to balance the charges. So we have two negative means like negative two. Left hand side have no charges, which is zero. So the difference is two. We're going to add the two electrons to the more positive one, which is the left hand side for this case. Then we're going to rearrange it so that it looks prettier. Then we are done. Basically, they tell us that fluorine gas will receive two electrons to form fluoride ions. Just remember, all of the halogens will change in color after the reactions. So for fluorine gas, in the beginning it's light yellow, and in the end of the reactions, it becomes colorless. Now we're going to do the same thing for chlorine gas. In the beginning, it's light green in color. In the end of the reaction, it becomes colorless. Let's balance off first with two chloride ions. Then after that, we're going to look at the charges. Right hand side is negative two and left is zero. Balance off with two electrons. Rearrange it and we are done. Then we're going to do the same thing for bromine molecules and iodine molecules. So these are the half reactions for the ionic equations. Next, we're going to look at the fluorine gas undergo the reactions to become fluoride ions. These kind of reactions eventually will keep on occurs until equilibrium is achieved. It means that it's not one direction. When we receive electron to become fluoride ions, eventually they will give away the electrons and form back fluorine gas as well. So it's why we say that redox reaction is eventually a redox equilibrium. Then we keep on reduce and oxidize until equilibrium is achieved. When equilibrium is achieved, we say that the rate of reductions and the rate of oxidations is eventually same. So let us separate to become two reactions. One is when we undergo the reactions to become fluoride ions. Another one is when our fluoride ion undergo oxidations to become fluorine gas. So now let's say we have the fluorine molecules, which will receive the electrons. Since they receive electrons, they become the fluoride ions. And this process we call it as the reduction process. So for this case, fluorine gas will act like an oxidizing agent. Because it receives the electrons, that's why we say that it's oxidizing agents. Meanwhile, this fluoride ion that we form we have the tendency to lose the electron as well. And then, when we lose the electron, we say that it undergoes a process of oxidation to become the fluorine molecules. So for this part, we will say that the fluoride ion is eventually act like an reducing agents. So don't be surprised when you see that why halogens sometimes oxidizing agents 
and sometimes reducing agents. So to be clear, all of the halogen ions are eventually reducing agents, but all of the molecules for halogens are oxidizing agents. So don't be confused. And that's all for halogens. So we are done with Don McNoise on holiday. Now we're going to look at the RSM, which means reduced social media. We're going to look at the reducing agents one by one, starting with sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide has a chemical formula of SO2. Since reducing agents will undergo the process of oxidation, mean they will gain more oxygen. So sulfur dioxide will become sulfate ion, which is with four oxygen for now. And this is going to be our general ideas. We're going to balance off the equations. Right hand side, we have more oxygen. Like usual, we're going to use water to balance off the oxygen. But the problem here is now we have more hydrogen at the left. We're going to add hydrogen ion to balance off. After that, we're going to balance the atoms. Right hand side, we have four oxygen. But left, we only have two oxygen plus one here. So this is why we need to twice the water so that we have four oxygen also at the left. Then after that, we have four hydrogens. We're going to balance off with four hydrogen at the right. After that, we're going to balance the charges. Left hand side have no charges. Right hand side have negative two plus four positive. So in the end, we have positive two. So the difference is two electrons. So two electrons are going to add to the more positive side, which is right hand side. Two electrons and we are done. One more thing that we need to know, sometimes we will see something like sulfide ions. So sulfide ions will also undergo the oxidation to become sulfate ions. So this is the concept, we're going to balance it. So since we can see that right hand side we have more oxygen, so we're going to balance it off with waters. Then after that, you can see that right hand side have no hydrogens, so we add with hydrogens. Now we're going to balance with the elements. So we have two hydrogen at the right hand side. So we're going to add another two at the right hand side. Then after that, we already balance everything. Now we look at the charges. Left hand side, we have negative two. Must be equivalent to negative two plus two. Negative two plus two because we have two times one, right? So right hand side, we have zero. Left hand side, we have negative two. So the difference is two. We're going to add two electrons to the more positive one which is the right hand side. So two electrons is added to the right hand side and we are done for anything about sulfur dioxide. Hydrogen sulfide. So hydrogen sulfide is a reducing agent if we undergo the process of oxidation. So hydrogen sulfide has a chemical formula of H2S. So since it undergo the process of oxidation, mean it will lose the hydrogens, become just sulfur. So this is a general idea first, and we're going to balance the equation like usual. Right hand side has no hydrogens, so we give hydrogen to the right hand side, and after that we balance the atom, so we have two hydrogen at the right hand side, and then we're going to balance the charges. Right hand side we have positive two, left we have no charges. So the difference is just two electrons, that will be added to the more positive side. Then we are done for hydrogen sulfide. Last, we're going to look at the reactive metals. So we know reducing agents will undergo the process of oxidation, which basically just giving away the electrons. And as we know, metals are more than happy to give away the electrons to form ionic compound. All thanks to their electropositivity, which is they are very ready to donate the electrons, this is why they are good reducing agents. Eventually, the reducing power increases with the electropositivity. Means that the easier you lose away your electrons, means you are a better reducing agent. So now let us start with the example of sodium. When sodium gives away the electrons, eventually it becomes a cation, which is a positive ion. You can think of when you throw away your negative, you become a positive person. But not only sodium, all of the other metals will act the same, like potassiums, 
lithium, but magnesium, we have the two valence electrons. If we don't have two electrons to become positive two ions, same for zinc and same for copper. But we're going to look at the copper as our examples. You think of copper metals, when they donate the electrons, they become copper two ion, which is blue color in ions. And this process what we call as a oxidation. And for this case, copper act like an reducing agent, right? But when they form the copper two ions, they have the tendency to receive back the electrons and to form the copper metals. And this process we call as the reductions. And this process, the copper two ion will act like an oxidizing agents. Because when copper two ion receive the electrons, we call it as a reduction process to become the copper metals. So this is why copper two ion will act like an oxidizing agent. So don't be confused. Metals are reducing agents, but the metal ion is the oxidizing agent and we are done. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.